Okay. Well, that takes us to um, that takes us out of the uh, alphabetical index, and now we'll close up the introduction and we'll look at what's called the classified schedule. Classified schedule, I hope you can see, is a fancy name for something we know a lot about already, and that's the idea of a hierarchy. So this is a hierarchical representation of all the terms. By um, by convention, inside this sort of um, inside this sort of thesaurus, we have a very particular way of representing that hierarchy. The way that hierarchy is represented is the very top of the hierarchy is given a name in upper and lower case and bolded. And then it's given a letter. In this case, A, you can see artifacts down here is B. And then all the terms under that begin with that A classification. So this is kind of like a dot classification where each, each dot separates the different levels of the hierarchy. But notice down here in artifacts that we have a kind of a, a funny way of, of, of seeing or, or of having a second level of that hierarchy. By the way, each of these top levels are termed facets. So we have all the facets of the of the terms in the um, all the facets of the terms in the thesaurus. Each facet is given a letter. So these are not thesaurus terms. Abstract entities is not a term in the thesaurus. In in uh, instead, it's a term that we use to categorize the terms in the thesaurus. And now, if we look under artifacts, this um, facet B, we see that artifacts actually has a subfacet. So here's the facet artifacts. And here's the subfacet, artifacts for the use in winemaking. And notice the little um, indicator here, B with a lowercase a. The B is for the facet, and the lowercase a is for the subfacet. So this is a fairly complicated way of representing hierarchy. You, you know, we could just have said 1.1.1, but instead we said, or actually B would be 2, right? 2 for oak barrels, we could have said 2.1.1. Instead we say B with a small a dot 1. And then from then on, we'll see that we use a straight numeric classification, 1.1.1, etc. etc. So I want to just point to the kind of the nuance of how this is represented. We have facets, we have subfacets, and these subfacets are put in brackets and they're put in italics, and they're assigned a lowercase letter in order of, of the facets. Um, we can arrange these facets, by the way, in any way we want. So there's a sequence. This facet comes first, this facet comes second, this facet comes third. And we assume that um, the author of the thesaurus made a conscious choice to say which ones of those comes first and which comes second. Okay, that's the idea of facets and subfacets and how those are or, or numbered. Then look at the terms. Each of these, each of these is a term in the thesaurus. In fact, they're only the preferred terms. We won't find aeration anywhere, this term over here, because aeration is a non-preferred term. However, oak barrels, and I can click on it to go to it, is a preferred term, and it's in there. Um, and let's go back. So here we have oak barrels, and then bottles, and corks, and wine cellars, and decanter, etc. And those are all the facets that are not under the artifact facet. Excuse me. Those are all the terms that are under the artifacts by wine making subfacet, which is in turn under the artifacts facet. This, this term palette is directly under a facet. This term oak barrels is under a subfacet. So we have facet, subfacet, and then. Now let's go down and look at C here, and C has no subfacets, um, and in fact C shows us the next uh, the next important aspect of um, of these this faceted or or, um, or uh, classified schedule, and that is that if a term that's listed in the classified schedule has narrower terms, those narrower terms are also listed in the classified schedule. So here we have uh, a hierarchy that's established by, for example, character. If we look at character over here, we see that character has depth, mouthfeel, blah, 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 all of these narrower terms, right? These are subterms. These are narrower terms under character, and we can see there depth, mouthfeel, scent, sight, etc. And notice that depth has subterms. In fact, under character, under mouthfeel, under finish, there's even yet another subterm called length. So that hierarchy that's established from term to term by broader and, and narrower uh, terms is represented as well in the classified schedule. The classified schedule is headed up by facets and subfacets, and then under the facets and subfacets come the terms, and then from there on down, if there is an on down from there, it's determined by the broader and narrower terms. Um, one other thing to, to mention, notice that here it's characters in uppercase, and here it's character in lowercase. 
um, uh, I hope at this point you will you'll you'll immediately say you immediately say well we don't store both the uppercase version and the lowercase version behind the scenes instead we turn the lowercase version into an uppercase version or possibly vice versa when we make the split right so there's not two words an uppercase version of character anywhere and a lowercase version of character there's only one version of it and then we render it in different ways depending on um, what we need to do okay so that's the overview of the thesaurus I hope that helps you kinda get oriented to it and now you can begin to take it apart and try to build your own